let's see if this take will actually work. I'm maybe third time's the charm. I've already tried to film this video like two other times and the audio wasn't right or I caught the lens in a weird position or something. So let's see if this actually takes. Nicole and I like to make videos about American history and some things your teacher may have never told you. All right, today's story is kind of a hodgepodge of a whole bunch of different things about the West and women's suffrage and territories and Arizona history and a whole bunch of other things. So I hope you stick around and enjoy the ride. As most of you may know, after the Civil War, it launched this period in American history known as Westward Expansion. There's just this huge explosion in immigration, you know, people from the North, people from the South, people from other countries, China, Ireland, all the, and you know, people looking to the West as this new promise for America, this new hope and this new chapter in the American experiment. And so in the West, you have this culture that develops that's just a little bit different than the East. I think it's kind of comparable to birth order theory. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but it's the idea that, you know, the firstborn is a little bit different in personality and characteristics and the secondborn and the lastborn and yada, yada, yada. In a similar way, I think that states are a little bit like that. And if you think of the East Coast, the Eastern states as being the first firstborn children, then the West Coast is kind of the last born children and they take on different characteristics. So while we're all big, a part of this big American experiment and we all have those roles to play within that, each state is just a little bit different. And that's where we get to the idea of women's suffrage in the West. So as all these people are moving out here and you have men, you have women, you have people from all over the world coming to the West to make their way. The railroads are expanding, the mines are opening up, there's boom towns and ghost towns. And so <laughs> you get out West and there's just this boom, collision of all these different types of people. And it creates this culture that's a little bit more egalitarian in some respects than out east. Because you have to be, you're gonna get eaten by a cougar if you don't cooperate. And of course, there were some challenges and some injustices that happened along the way. There were, you know, there was still racism and there was still um, inequality between genders and all of that, sure but it's just different, like it's a different culture. In some respects, the newness of the West helped to create a culture that was a little bit more willing to give women the right to vote. So after the Civil War, a lot of the abolitionists who were also suffragists, you know, slavery was over and done with, and you know, there's still work to do, but now they're on the women's voting rights train. And oddly enough, even though a lot of the suffragists were from the East, <laughs> which, I mean, a lot of people were from the East at the time. It wasn't the East that gave women the right to vote first. I think you'd be surprised to know that it was actually the Wyoming Territory that gave women the right to vote first. Now there's a whole bunch of factors that go into play with this and people argue and debate over what the motivating reasons were, some of which was that just population-wise, there was a lot of men out in the West and not a lot of women. Of course there were women, but in at the time, in the Wyoming Territory, the ratio between men and women was six to one. And so they wanted thriving families and a healthy society and to make Wyoming a respectable place to live. And so part of that was getting women to come along. And so maybe if they gave women the right to vote, that would be, you know, something good that would come out of it. And so in 1869, the Territory of Wyoming given, gives women the right to vote. A couple years later, Colorado follows suit, and then um, Utah and Idaho follow suit in the 1890s. And by 1914, all of the states west of the Rocky Mountains have given women the right to vote. And hardly any east of the Rocky Mountains have given women the right to vote. You would think that it wouldn't be that way, given that a lot of the suffragists were in the east, but 
just the newness of the West, I think, led to women's suffrage taking hold a little bit better in the West than it did in the East. Now, this is kind of where it gets into what I actually wanted to talk about because I have a little bit of ulterior motives given that it's Valentine's Day. Now to most of the world, February 14th is Valentine's Day. However, to all of us here in good old state 48, February 14th is statehood day. On February 14th, 1912, Arizona became the 48th state to join the union. Now, I wanted to give you a little bit of backstory, as I usually do, to kind of lead the way into this section about Arizona. So in the 1850s, Arizona, along with New Mexico and this whole southwestern region, became a territory of the United States. And over the course of several years, Arizona starts developing its own identity and wants its own territory. But, you know, people back in Washington weren't so keen for whatever reason, you know, they got other important things like the Civil War to deal, deal with and they're not too concerned about what's going on over in Arizona. And unfortunately, in the process of all of this, Arizonans saw an opportunity when the Confederate States seceded from the Union during the Civil War. There was this brief ordeal with the Confederate States of America in which Arizona became a part, but then Abraham Lincoln kind of got the message, and in 1863, in February, <laughs> Abraham Lincoln made this, the territory of Arizona its own distinct, unique territory separate from New Mexico. And then by the 1890s, the Civil War is over and Arizonans are wanting statehood. But nobody back in Washington gives a rip and they're not really taking us too seriously. In fact, there's, there's this whole delegation that goes to Washington with a constitution, a state constitution, and they send them back with their tails between their legs. And then later on in the early 1900s, we try it again. And this time there's the chairman of the Senate Committee on Territories that thinks it would be a good idea if we combine Arizona and New Mexico to create one state instead of two. Now, New Mexico thought that this was a great plan, they were all for it, but Arizona did not like this plan at all, as you can imagine with the story up until this point and they vetoed it very hard. And they essentially said, we'd rather be a territory for the rest of our days than give up our own identity as a state. Actually, even a funny story with that, the Phoenix City Council took issue with Theodore Roosevelt for all of this and changed Roosevelt Street to Cleveland Street because they were so mad. They eventually changed it back, but they were not too happy about the whole suggestion about combining Arizona and New Mexico. Anyway, a couple of years later, in the 1910s, Arizonans once again sat down to put together a constitution, and part of that constitution was the right for the citizens to recall judges through a popular vote. Now, the President of the United States at the time was Taft, and Taft had made it very clear that he was not going to admit any new state into the Union if they had that provision in their constitution. Now, New Mexico listened to this suggestion from Taft, but Arizona kept it in their constitution. So, New Mexico gets entrance into the country, then they're made the 47th state to enter the Union. Meanwhile, good old Arizona's constitution gets rejected by Taft, just as he said. So Arizona's are like, fine, we'll take it out. And they did take it out, and their constitution got accepted. And they were hoping that they would gain entrance to the Union on February 12th because that's Abraham Lincoln's birthday and ever since good old Abe gave us a territory back in the day we've had an affinity and we were hoping to get his birthday as our statehood day but that wasn't in the cards that didn't happen that the 12th rolls around and it doesn't happen and the 13th is unlucky so they didn't do it on the 13th and then BAM Arizona becomes the 48th state to join the United States of America so why do I go into all this Mostly just to kind of give you an idea of how 
laborious this whole process was. It's hard to become a state, first of all. There were lots of people working throughout that time, even through the territorial time, to give women the right to vote, but they were afraid that we would be rejected like we had been rejected so many times if we had that in our constitution. Well, I want you to know that that very fall in 1912, just a couple short months after we became a state, the state of Arizona put two more things into our state constitution. One, referendum and recall, you know, take that Taft, and two, the all-male voting electorate of the state of Arizona gave the ladies of Arizona the right to vote. Almost an entire full decade prior to when the rest of the country got the right to vote. We had such a long and storied history of women serving in government in the state of Arizona. In 1915, we had our very first two lady legislators in the state house and state senate. And I'm gonna give you a couple more fun facts about the state of Arizona, cause why not? We are the only state to have had four female governors, and we are the only state to have had two consecutive female governors, and the very first female Supreme Court Justice of the United States hailed from Arizona. So, you know, sometimes things take a while, and that's okay. But in the end, they usually work out. So I just wanted to give you a lowdown on the West and just kind of open up your mind a little bit. This is by no means a, you know, all-inclusive look into women in the West. There's so much to talk about there. But I just wanted to give you kind of a summary view of, you know, how the West was shaped in some respects by women. I think that was pretty cool. If you liked my story, please hit like and subscribe below. I'd love to hear more from you, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Stage coaches, stage coaches, and all that jazz. <coughs> God bless America. <coughs> I'm very sneezy today for whatever reason. My allergies have taken a hold. <coughs> Excuse me.